It's not often that common folk like you or I are able to take a peek behind the curtain to see what the military is working on. For obvious reasons, military weapons and experiments are kept under tight wraps, often taking place at undisclosed locations or top-secret military bases. For the most part, this is done to protect local and international security. Though time and time again, information gets leaked to the public that leaves us with our jaws dropped. Militaries around the world have conducted bizarre experiments or created crazy weapons that we simply cannot understand the use for. MKUltra is the perfect example of this, a United States-funded program that looked into the possibility of mind control, often using innocent and unsuspecting victims as test subjects. With operations like this in mind, we'd like to introduce you to several creepy military experiments that have been recorded. And make sure you stick around for number three, as it's truly strange and disturbing. But before we jump into it, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Operation White Coat the name of this experiment was coined after many of the leaders of the experiment were seen wearing white coats throughout the duration of the trial. Back in the 1950s, more than 3,000 U.S. soldiers willingly took part in this operation. For the most part, many of these participants were members of the Seventh-day Adventist faith, a Protestant movement that forbids members from taking part in violence towards others. This operation appeared to be a dream come true for many participants. I'm sure most of us would like to serve our country the best way possible. However, for members of the Seventh-day Adventists, pacifism was a critical part of their religion. This meant that they were largely forbidden from entering the military military or any other government operation that involved weapons. However, the government assured these participants that they would not be asked to enter combat. Instead, they were only tasked with taking part in a medical experiment that would eventually save the lives of thousands, if not millions of people. The military asked that these individuals willingly infect themselves with pathogens at Fort Derrick in Maryland. These pathogens would either be yellow fever, the plague, or hepatitis A. After they were infected, the doctors would monitor the progress of the disease and, in the end, test out new types of vaccines on the individuals who were taking part in the study. Up until this point, these vaccines had never been tested on humans. They would have led to disastrous consequences for the participants of the study. However, for the most part, everything went according to plan. When looking back on this operation many years later, many people praised the operation for its transparency. Up until this point, as we will soon learn, the U.S. government had not been very open about the testing they conducted on civilians. However, in this case, the participants, who would be given the title of soldier, were all well informed about the tests they were a part of and helped to save countless lives. However, there is a bit of a negative aspect of this case. As we now know, the efficacy and safety of these vaccines were not well understood at the time. This meant that, in the long run, these vaccines could have had devastating effects on the soldiers. In the years after the study, only 500 of the 3,000 soldiers were asked to report any long-term health benefits. In reality, most people agree that all 3,000 should have been asked to report any health issues later down the line. Operation Vegetarian During the Second World War, the British military had many crazy ideas that, in the grand scheme of things, might have worked. If their plans had been carried to fruition, however, thousands of innocent lives would have been lost. It was during this war that the Brits came up with the idea of infecting large herds of cattle, essentially cutting off the German food supply. They decided to bake millions of anthrax-infected cakes that would then be given to cattle after dropping the cakes from airplanes that flew overhead. 
This infection would obviously be transmitted to the cows, meaning that the cows would either die off or the disease would begin to make its way to humans, claiming the lives of thousands of German civilians. As we now know, this incredibly cruel task was never carried out. However, it seems as though the British had every intention of doing so, though the war ended before they found the perfect opportunity. Their plans made it far past the planning stages, as they'd gone as far as creating more than 5 million of these infected cakes to disperse. In the end, after the war was called off, all of the cakes were burned. All of the testing for this operation was carried out on Grunard Island. After testing had been completed, the island was labeled as a restricted area for more than 50 years, with this restriction only being lifted in 1990. It's disturbing to think about how the war could have gone much differently if the British had released these contaminated cakes into German cattle fields. Operation Cauldron There are many different types of weapons that can be used during a war. More often than not, guns or swords are taken to the battlefield, but warfare can get much messier than this. For example, biological warfare has been around since the dawn of man. Biological warfare is one of the cruelest types of war. Rather than using bullets or missiles or explosions to take someone's life, these methods of biological warfare can leave a person in excruciating pain or agony for days at a time until they pass away naturally. The use of biological warfare dates back countless centuries. One of the first documented uses of this type of attack dates back to around 3,000 years ago, when the Hittites would send contaminated cattle to graze alongside the healthy cattle of their enemies. We know that disease could spread like wildfire back in those days, so the infected cattle would very quickly cause all of the other cattle nearby to grow very sick. This would make the cattle unhealthy to eat, meaning that the food supply of the civilians would be instantly cut off. If we fast forward through history a bit, we also know that the ancient Greeks and Romans would throw body parts of the dead into the food and water supply of their enemies, meaning that their enemies would either die of thirst or be forced to find another source of food and water, which in these times was not often an option. If they couldn't find another source of nutrition, they would die off within a matter of weeks, meaning the opposing army would win the war by default. In more recent history, the 1950s to be precise, the British government carried out a series of biological warfare dubbed Operation Cauldron. Even though these cruel experiments were carried out by the British government, it was actually a team effort between Britain, the United States, and China. The three major political powers joined forces to better understand the effects of this type of weapon, helping them to learn new ways of conquering their enemies. For this experiment, the British government gathered together around 83 monkeys and 3,500 guinea pigs. They wanted to test how easily they could spread a pathogen that would cause serious distress to the pulmonary system, as well as testing how quickly they could spread the bubonic plague. To keep this test under wraps and far away from the prying eyes of the public, they decided to conduct the tests at sea. They loaded up all of the animals on a pontoon, took them out to the middle of the ocean, and then blasted them with the infected materials. After waiting a while, the animals would then be retrieved and tested aboard government ships to test the effectiveness of their weapons. Just weeks before Operation Cauldron was scheduled to end, the test nearly resulted in mass casualties and a national catastrophe. Without knowing it, one of the ships that were carrying civilians in the area accidentally traveled through a cloud of plague spores. However, rather than the government alerting passengers about what had happened, they decided to keep things quiet and monitor the ship's occupants for illness over the course of about three weeks. During that time, passengers of the ship even managed to leave the ship, mingle with locals, then get back onto the ship, nearly causing a nationwide outbreak of the plague. 
However, bizarrely enough, none of the passengers grew ill, and there were no reported deaths as a result of the mishap. It would take several decades before this news would be released to the public. After it did, the government insisted that they were only testing these weapons for the purpose of protecting their civilians. However, future documents proved that this was not true, and the government may have had intentions to use the weapons offensively. MK Ultra. Just imagine if you were able to get into the mind of your enemy during a major world war. This wouldn't only be useful for better understanding their future attacks, but imagine if you were able to manipulate the enemy to cause them to back down, bend to your every command, or worse. This is exactly what the United States government had in mind when they began to implement MKUltra, one of the most devastating and inhumane tests performed on humans in the United States. The whole purpose of this program was to gain control of a person's mind using any means necessary. This may sound like some sort of supposedly magical potion that would have been concocted in the Middle Ages. However, this operation was very real and was successful to a certain extent. What made this experiment so incredibly deranged was that it was carried out on victims who had no idea they were part of the experiment. For the most part, the government would use prisoners as their test subjects, but we also have reason to believe that they would use mentally ill or physically disabled victims as well. They would administer mind-altering drugs to these individuals with the hopes of being able to better manipulate them. They would often use drugs that were readily available, such as LSD or mescaline. We know that drugs like this were used for recreational purposes during the hippie movement of the 60s and 70s. However, the CIA had other ideas in mind for these potentially devastating chemicals. Tests like this were strictly forbidden according to the U.S. Constitution. However, the CIA helped to carry out these experiments anyway. When all of this finally came to light many years later, the CIA did its best to cover its tracks by destroying most of the documents that stemmed from the experiment. These days, all of the research has been lost or destroyed, meaning we may never know the full scope of what the CIA carried out all those years ago. Philadelphia Experiment Unlike many of the other experiments we've covered today, we don't know for sure whether or not Operation Philadelphia was actually carried out. Reports seem to vary, and there's no definite answer about whether or not this experiment came to fruition. Likewise, we don't know too much about the experiment other than it was being used to help the U.S. Navy develop a new way to make themselves invincible to other enemy ships. Their main idea behind this was to create a new kind of super magnet that would help to repel all other ships from coming nearby. Likewise, it can be assumed that any ammunition that was launched at the ship would be repelled as well. October of 1943 is allegedly when this experiment took place. It's been said that the USS Eldridge, the ship that was being used to carry out the study, completely disappeared from sight for about 15 minutes. When it reappeared, it's been said that the soldiers on board suffered a terrible fate. Some of them had allegedly been slammed into the sides of the ship, essentially becoming a permanent part of the vessel. Other crew members disappeared entirely and were never seen again. Some members also allegedly went up in flames and lost their lives. To make matters even more creepy, there have been reports that people who were involved with this project have inexplicably disappeared many years after the project is said to have ended. At the end of it all, we simply don't have enough evidence to say whether or not this experiment was carried out, though if it was, it was clearly a very big mistake by the US Navy. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you know about any other creepy government experiments or projects that we didn't cover in this video. 
Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments, and your suggestions may just make it into a future video. But that's all for now. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our future uploads. We'll see you guys next time.